Hello, this is Susan Woods, your Black Lives Matter fraud investigator. Thank you for your time. No, I am not here to promote a presidential candidate. I am here to warn this presidential candidate's committee and team about the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. I read an article today that concerns me because it is the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation making demands on this presidential candidate's team. So my warning to, to this team, to the Harris team is, do not give into Black Lives Matter demands. Do not give into Black Lives Matter demands. I'm gonna tell you what the demands are in just one moment, but it just really makes my blood boil to see the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, three member board of directors come out from wherever they've been over the last couple of years to make demands when Kamala Harris is the presumptive nominee. Again, look, I'm not promoting any presidential candidate. That is not what the purpose of my channel is, but it just makes me sick to my stomach to see how they are exploiting her race to tag along their toxic environment, their toxic program, the toxicity of the entire Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. So my warning is to do not give into Black Lives Matter demands. Take heed from other organizations that have done so in the past and have paid the price. That includes corporations, that includes actresses, actors, that includes other nonprofit organizations that have given into the demand of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation to their own detriment. Let me tell you about the article that I read. And I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation now that Harris is the presumptive nominee for the Democratic um, presidential candidacy. So this is the article, it's from Reuters um, that I read. It said, Black, Black Lives Matter demands DNC hosts virtual primary. It was written by Gabriella Borter and Bianca Flowers today, posted today, this morning, July the 23rd, 2024. Now, this is four years later after the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation generated $90 million, which in which we still don't know where the money is. Where is the money? We still don't know. So now they are rearing their ugly heads to try to make demands on the DNC to host a virtual primary. I'm going to go now. I'm going to pause my screen and go to the actual article and read it so that you can see it for yourself. I know you can find it for yourself, but I'm just gonna go to the article quickly and read it um, aloud so that we can look at it together. Just one moment as I pull it up. It just, like I said, it just makes my blood boil to see how they're gonna try to tag on and exploit this presidential um, process for, for what, what reason? But what, what credibility can they have? So here is the article. Black Lives Matter demands DNC host virtual primary. Okay. Black Lives Matter demanded on Tuesday that the Democratic National Committee immediately host an informal virtual SNAP primary across the country prior to the DNC convention in August just hours after Vice President Kamala Harris secured enough delegates for the nomination. We call for the Rules Committee to create a process that allows for public participation in the nomination process, not just a nomination party, not, not, excuse me, not just a nomination by party delegates, BLM said in a statement provided to Reuters. The current political landscape is unprecedented. 
with President Biden stepping aside in a manner never seen before. This moment calls for decisive. Dis I'm sorry. <laughs> decisive i'm so aggravated i'm so angry i can't even read decisive action to protect the integrity of our democracy and the voices of black voters the statement said the statement by the group which is a decentralized political and racial justice movement that helped lead the global protest over police violence in 2020 interrupts a steady drumbeat of left-leaning voices and groups that have vowed to support Harris at the body endorsed her on Sunday. Isn't that something? They are a decentralized political and racial justice movement that helped, helped lead the global protest. You mean helped with burning down communities? Is that what we're talking about? Harris campaign has raked in $100 million since Sunday with millions coming from the rapid mobilization of black leaders and advocates. She would be the first black woman and Asian American to become the Democratic presidential candidate. Democratic National Committee Chairman Jamie Harrison said Monday, the Democratic Party will deliver a presidential nominee by August the 7th. The process has been fair. It's been open. It's been transparent, Harrison said in a Today Show interview that aired Tuesday morning. But if anybody is thinking about running, you're running against the sitting you're running against the sitting vice president, who, along with Joe Biden, has worked really hard going across this country, building relationships, and is probably the most qualified person to be on this ballot. The DNC and Harris's campaign did not reply immediately for requests for comment. BLM said that while President Joe Biden wasn't their preferred candidate, the Democratic Party's actions surrounding his candidacy and dropping out were troubling. Following the primary, where millions of Black voters weighed in after one poor debate performance, the DNC party elites and billionaire donors bullied Joe Biden out of the race, the group noted, the group being the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. Now, Democratic Party elites and billionaire donors are attempting to manipulate Black voters by anointing Kamala Harris and an unknown vice president as a new Democratic ticket without a primary vote by the public. Black voters, and especially Black women, have historically been the most reliable Democratic voting bloc, and large swaths of Black Americans have already pledged support for Harris. This is what bothers me about the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, using terminology that they know is going to evoke some type of reaction. Now, Democratic Party elites and billionaire donors are attempting to manipulate Black voters by anointing Kamala Harris. Isn't that something? This is how they work. They work on the emotions of people to say, oh, okay, we're being led we don't have brains of our own black people. We don't have our own brains. We cannot think for ourselves. So now the Democratic Party elites and billionaires have the capacity to capacity to manipulate our minds. So the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation leaders have to come in and save us from ourselves. This is ridiculous. And the article goes on to say, Tens of thousands of Black supporters, supporters joined organizing calls on Sunday and, morning, and Monday, including political and business leaders, and raised nearly $3 million for Harris's campaign. More than 44,000 Black women and, ally, and allies joined a three-hour call Sunday evening, hosted by Win with Black Women, an intersectional network of Black women leaders. 
The call features several black, prominent black women, including U.S. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, Jasmine Crockett, and Joyce Beatty, as well as political strategists and celebrities. Attendees donated $1.5 million, the organizers said. A similar call hosted by Win with Black Men on Monday lasted four hours, had some 45,000 attendees, and raised $1.3 million for the campaign, organizers said. Black Lives Matter noted that while the potential outcome of a Harris presidency may be historic, the process to achieve it must align with true democratic values. We have no idea where Kamala Harris stands on the issues now that she has assumed Joe Biden's place. And we have no idea of the record of her potential vice president because we don't even know who it is yet, BLM, BLM said. This is not an attack on Kamala Harris or Black women. And right now we aren't questioning Kamala's qualifications or capabilities said Shalamaya Bowers, <laughs> a Black Lives Matter leader. This is about the nominating process. This is so rich to come from Shalamaya Bowers and they're defining him as a Black Lives Matter leader. He's the president of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation or, or a member of the board, if not the president. So they need to describe him as a board member of this toxic organization. You may remember me talking about Shalamaya Bowers in one of my prior videos when I was analyzing the uh, Form 990 information return to show where the money goes. But if you were not following me at that time, let me show you who he is. Let me tell you who this is, Shalamaya Bowers. Let me just show you who this man is with the audacity to say he doesn't even know who Kamala Harris is or her, her standings or whatever. I'm paraphrasing, trying to make it seem as if he doesn't know enough about her to determine whether or not she's credible for the position. But yet he is a person who needs to be under investigation right now. This is Shalamaya Bowers. He is the founder of the Bowers Consulting Firm, a fully integrated political consulting firm whose mission is to support progressive campaigns tackling the biggest political challenges facing society today. He has nearly a decade's experience in developing and implementing community outreach programs and campaigns. He does this work in honor of his brother, Donald. Okay, that's fine. But the Black Lives Matter founder and former board president and executive director, Patrice Kahn Coolers, paid the Bowers Consulting Firm, owned by Shalamaya Bowers, $2,167,894 for consulting services in 2020. In other words, Patrice Kahn Coolers, who ran the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation as her personal bank account, in my opinion, and helped her friends and her cohorts by giving them unrealistic amounts of money for services that no one can understand. She gave him, Shalamara Bowers, over $2 million in 2020 to do what? Nobody knows. Consulting services. For what? What were the results? What type of consulting services? No one knows. And that's just one example of how she doled out millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to her friends and business partners. When the money started rolling in, the $90 million started rolling in from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation in 2020. So how dare this young man, this person, question anything about anybody when he is sitting on the board of directors at the same time receiving money as a consultant. That is a blatant conflict of interest. But yet, here they come, here they come tagging along, trying to present themselves as a credible organization. 
you're not credible until you answer the question, where is the money? So here's my response. I put this comment on the Reuters website. I said, Black Lives Matter is a toxic organization that includes so-called leaders who refuse to account for the $90 million the organization raised immediately following the death of George Floyd. I've investigated Black Lives Matter for, for four years, and I have over 50 videos on my YouTube channel in which I share information about the fraudulent activities the people who led and are leading do not demonstrate any accountability or transparency. For example, Shalomara Bowers is the board president who accepted over 200,000, and that was, I made a correction on that, over 200,000 as a paid consultant when Patrice Khan Coolers was the board president while he was also on the leadership team. This is only one example of a conflict of interest that Black Lives Matter demonstrated in the past. Bringing a toxic organization like BLM into the Kamala Harris for, for President campaign will be a huge, huge, huge mistake. Credibility will go into the toilet immediately. Ignore Black Lives Matter's attempt to be important. This organization is a fraud based on my research. And then I did a correction. Correction, Black Lives Matter paid Shalomar Bowers $2,167,894 in 2024 consulting services. So here we are, everybody. Like I said, whew, wow. I don't know how this organization has gotten away with such blatant fraud when it's supposed to be a 501c3 nonprofit organization governed by the Department of the Treasury, which governs the Internal Revenue Service. How has it gotten away with this much fraud with the FBI not investigating? Banks that process the transactions not investigating. When small business owners, small people who are trying to do the best that they can are audited by the Internal Revenue Service. When they are being honest and doing the work. How does this organization get away with it? I don't know. I don't know. I am in the process of writing a book about this whole fiasco. The book is untitled so far, but it's about the Black Lives Matter fraud and it's gonna be available for purchase by February the 1st, 2025. I will give you more information about the book and if you'd like to purchase a copy of it um, in the future in upcoming videos, but I will tell you that the net proceeds from the book will benefit the Rebuild Clio Economic Development Foundation. It is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that I created to generate revenues to help my hometown of Clio, South Carolina, C-L-I-O, South Carolina, to rebuild. It's in a deteriorating state and we need money. So the net proceeds from the sale of this book will go to that 501c3 nonprofit organization. And I will, again, provide additional details for you in the future. But I just wanted to say that um, I, I'm just, I'm just so, I'm just so disappointed. I'm so disappointed in the fact that the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation is trying to latch on to um, this campaign. Like I said, I am not here to promote Kamala Harris or anybody else for president. That's not the purpose of my YouTube channel. It's not political in that way. But I would share this advice with anyone running for any office. Doesn't have to be the president. Any office, I would share this advice. Do not give into the Black Lives Matter demands. Do not succumb. Stay strong. Ignore them. Because they are toxic. And they would derail whatever you're trying to do. 
I'm Susan Woods, your Black Lives Matter fraud investigator. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day.